There are negatives to carnivore diet. Would you like to hear them? Diego, how did you find carnivore? Well, as with so many of your other guests, it's a long story. Um, I'd have to start back uh, to understand my health issues ahead, uh, and then we can work up because the last health issue is is how I found it. Um, I had been um, battling weight issues, not horribly. I, I was never, I was never obese, but I was certainly very overweight um, for years. Um, which is funny because finding the photos of me, although you have one of me being overweight was difficult because I'm a photographer um, and I hated, I, I hated being in front of the camera because of the weight issues. So the only time that I ever had pictures taken of me was when that I had gone on these diets and lost all this weight. And so if you look at my photo history of myself, you go, oh, it's not really, you know, that probably much of a problem, but uh, it, it certainly was. Um, it gotten, you know, it had gotten to points where I'd had to crash diet, basically, you know, it was restrictive calorie diets that I had gone down a, a lot of weight. At my highest, I was 247. Uh, I'm 6'2", so you would think that's not bad, but I carried all my weight, unfortunately, in my abdomen. You know, not necessarily my belly, but my abdomen as a whole. You know, I had this skinny legs, skinny arms syndrome, and I was carrying everything as visceral fat. Um, and I realized that, so I'd go on these crash diets, and uh, this was my life, you know, uh, for so many years. I'm 55 now. I battled a lot of health issues now that I realized were probably metabolic diseases uh, from allergies that weren't there when I was younger to, you know, that have got to be where dang, I'm allergic to so many things, environmental, not foods, but environmental things that I, I became allergic to, including my cats, which I've had all my life. Um, you know, tree pollen, grass, everything outside, seasonal stuff that was becoming miserable. Um, and I have to go through this short bit so you'll understand where I'm at today. This doesn't really have to do with how I got to carnivore, but it does relate to later on where I am now. Um, all of these issues ex started to become uh, really a problem in respiratory diseases. I was catching everything. Um, <clears throat> I was catching, I mean, a cold would become just almost unbearable, you know, and then at one point a few years ago, I went from a cold to the flu to pneumonia and the hospital, um, you know, coughing up blood. It was, it was, it was really bad. At that point, I finally realized that it might have something to do with these allergies, you know, that I was putting all the stress on my, uh, on my respiratory system and this was causing an issue. So I went to the, um, Went to an allergist and found out, yeah, you're allergic to everything. And yes, this probably does have something to do with that. And ended up being on uh, two different steroids. Um, one, a nasal steroid. Everybody knows Flonase, but uh, prescription Flonase. Uh, Advair um, later became Brio, which is an inhalant, which is Flonase and a steroid inhalant for your, for your lungs. And... It, solved, it, it did solve the problem of me catching all these things all, you know, all this time. However, obviously steroids, um, not so good, uh, especially being on, there was, there was problems with these as well. Um, so fast forward to almost exactly three years ago, uh, I had lost a bit of weight, um, but I gained some back and I thought that I would be, uh, the funny thing is I have money, which is, this is, you know, the, you look back and the, the stupid decisions you make in life. I decided that I would get up on a ladder and I would trim my own hedges. Um, I was up on a nine foot ladder above a, um, a retaining wall and the ladder started to go over and I stepped off the ladder. And unfortunately, when I stepped over the ladder, uh, off the ladder, I came down on my left foot, uh, on my left leg and did a, uh, a complete knee, uh, yeah, I completely dislocated my knee. And I don't mean a kneecap dislocated, but I meant my entire knee, uh, which went 45 degrees to the side. So, yeah, um, I took out my MCL, my ACL, my PCL uh, and my LCL. Um, broke my, you know, had a bunch of fractures from where the ligaments yanked off my bone. And that got me... Uh, 
that got me a ride down to the hospital, which would have been bad enough. However, uh, this story gets from bad to really, really bad. Um, while I was on the ground here at my house and uh, when the first medic got there and finally they, they had to wait for the state that I'm in is so ridiculous that you actually, the medics can't give you an IV. They have to wait. I mean, the uh, EMTs, they have to wait for a medic. So they, I'd have another ambulance come before they could actually shoot me up with drugs in order to move me because they couldn't move me because my leg was off to the side. I had a complete knee, dis knee cap dislocation as well. I have pictures if I can send to you if you like. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Um, so anyway, uh, when she put the IV in, she st shoved staph infection into my arm. And uh, I went to the hospital and I was released there, you know, fairly frequently. You know, hey, you got to go to orthopedic. You can't walk. You're, you know, you're mobilized, all that, which is the normal thing they do after they find out. You have to worry about, you know, they're worried about my leg being taken because usually you'll rip out your artery that goes down there. You lose your leg. It's a lot of, you know, it's one of the things they worry about. So they did all those tests. I did a CT scan from my knee down figured out I get I was okay there. Um, sent me home, but I immediately knew something was wrong because I was having swelling in that location immediately. I'd gone to a local hospital a couple of times uh, immediately afterwards. They put me on one antibiotic and another antibiotic. The second antibiotic, they, they circled it around and they were like, hey, if it gets past this, you know, you, you're going to have to call back, you know, if it's, if it's still growing on these antibiotics. And uh, well, I did. Uh, rather rapidly within actually 24 hours, it blew past that. And my arm was the size of my legs. Um, so the second time they had, uh, I was in, they had actually done tests for if I had, was blood poisoning for sep you know sepsis. And they called me one evening and said, you're sepsis. You need to come in immediately. You know, your life is in danger, yada, yada, yada. Um, which kind of I already knew. Um, it was rather apparent from the, uh, from the size of my arm and the way I was feeling. Um, I'm going to tell you the rest. I'll come back to this in a second because it's important. But um, they admitted me while I was there, put me on vancomycin, really nasty, nasty, nasty antibiotic uh, to try to save my life. And while I was admitted, I was still in the ER, but the admitting doctor came down and he said, hey, have you had a CT scan of their chest? And I was like, no, I just did a CT scan of my you know, lower extremities after the accident. He says, well, have you had any issues, you know, breathing and chest pains? And I was like, well, funny you should mention that. I haven't been able to get up. I'm a, you know, I've always been a, you know, I've never been obese. So I've been active, you know, a hike, I did all this stuff. And I'm like, I couldn't get up on crutches to save my life. It was, and it felt like an elephant was sitting on my chest at all times. And I, you know, I told him this and they did a CT scan and I had developed two DVTs, uh, large, um, 18 plus inch DVTs in my legs that had blown up into my lungs, uh, to my right lungs and blown about, uh, one of the doctors estimated probably 30, very large, um, pulmonary emboli into my, into my lungs or right lungs. Um, and a couple of them in my left. <laughs> that got me a helicopter ride. Um, uh, yeah, very long, nasty helicopter ride to uh, to try to save me. And my heart was, uh, they, from the CT scan, they knew my heart was in severe distress and that I was uh, you know, close to death. Um, they weren't able to pump me up enough uh, blood thinners to save my life. Um, although this was a battle because I continued to blow um, more PEs over the next few days into my lungs. And so it was a bit of a battle going back and forth, being back in the hospital. I mean, it was back and forth to ERs quite a few times uh, and prolonged stays in the hospital to try to save my life. I have to tell you, um, nice wake up call <laughs> for, for life. <laughs> but that was how I started to get to, um, being a carnivore. <laughs> Uh, that was my path there originally. That was three years ago. Um, like I said it was August 9th, so we're literally just past that time, uh, three years ago. And the first battle, of course, was to walk again, um, which wasn't easy. Uh, I now wear a permanent brace um, on my leg if I do anything. I can walk around the house, I can go to the store, you know, not wearing a brace now. Um, 
but I have to have uh, a knee brace uh, to do anything else, to hike, to bike, uh, to do any kind of uneven grounds. I have to have it on there because although I've had multiple um, cadaver parts stuck in me, uh, specifically the MCL and the ACL were too loose. Um, so these cadaver parts uh, didn't tighten it up. And so it's so loose, I can actually take my leg and move it way over to the side. Uh, it's a nasty party trick. <laughs> Um, but the brace solves that. So a brace has been a lifesaver just because I can do anything with a brace. I mean, with a brace on, I'm, it's, I've had it go on me and a brace catches it. And I know I feel very comfortable with the brace, but, um, I took a long time to get there. First of all, they can't operate on you when you have, uh, when you have pulmonary emboli. <laughs> Uh, so they have to wait for all those to dissolve. It takes a long time, especially when you have as many as I did in my lungs. Um, so it was many months later before I could even have surgery on my knee. And then it was many months later after that before I could heal. And then um, I had to have another surgery on top of that after I had all these uh, cadaver parts put in me. I had to have scoping out because I had pretty much wiped out all the cartilage in there. You know, uh, what are you going to do? But... Um, I'm stubborn, so I you know, did all my PT, got to walking again. Uh, I really thought for a while, I talked to the doctor about just taking the leg for a while because I thought, you know, those nice, you could wear the, one of those blades, you know, on your leg <laughs> and run. And it's like, hey, they work pretty well these days. Uh, but we didn't have to do that. Uh, and I'm glad with, you know, with what the ultimate outcome was. However, um, being inactive for two years, yeah. Uh, as you can imagine, because there wasn't anything I could do about it, period. So my weight ballooned back up to uh, uh, to around uh, close to 230, two, uh, 227. I, you know, it, by the time I was able to kind of stabilize, I think it up to 230 at one point, I kind of stabilized at 227 and a half for a while and fighting the scale, stepping on the scale. Ah, I can't believe how much of a fat ass I am. But um I don't have much of an ego, but you know, get in front of the in front of the mirror and seeing that and the picture that I sent you. Yeah, it, it's hard, you know. You're like, I, I don't want to be this. Um, I'm watching my partner, uh, her parents are in assisted living now, and I, I don't want to be there. I've always been this um, very outgoing, you know. Uh, guy you know i'm not necessarily a fitness guy i, I don't go I, I never go to the gym uh, i do work out at home now but that's a different story we'll, we'll hit later but um finally i had enough and i'm like i'm gonna go on my diet again i know how to lose this weight i've done this before i don't know anything i, I completely clue um i had started to lose weight and that was in the start it was march of this year and i started to lose the weight and as i started to lose the weight I kept hitting these plateaus, you know, and uh, really having a hard time. And I'm calorie restricting, and I'm, and I'm really having to calorie restrict. At one point, I probably was sitting at 600 calories a day, just trying to lose the weight. And my body was already adjusting to that. I wasn't, uh, again, because my knee issues, it was really hard to, to be that active, you know, uh, and while trying to do this even earlier this year. Um, and so, all the weight on that knee. Uh, Obviously, from this, as you can understand, you have arthritis immediately. Um, it's, you know, uh, a really bad arthritis. It was what the second surgery was for to try to relieve some of that arthritis in there. Um, and I had already had, you know, I was already having arthritis and other issues and joint pains and things like that. You know, what I, I always just thought it was normal because I got old. You know, hey, I'm old. You're going to have arthritis. What are you going to do? Well, <laughs> so I... Uh, and this is how this all happened. I started looking online about how do I get unstuck, you know, from a diet. And I ran across fasting and not intermittent fasting. The first ones I was, uh, was long-term fasting. You know, what do you want to do there? And I had the willpower, you know, I've always had this willpower. I'll, I'll calorie reduce to anything, to anything, you know? So I'm like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> That's something I can do. Ah, strong. Strong will, I can, I can definitely calorie reduce. Um, 
funny part is, is if you look up these fasting things, you run into some carnivore people <laughs> on YouTube. You know, they'll they'll kind of come across uh, and or, you know, keto, the keto community as a whole. Um, well, the first thing I learned about the fasting when I started to look it up was and I don't remember who the first people that I was that I went to for the fasting. I, it's not people that I see now, but it was definitely, you know, these longer doctors that were talking about these longer term fastings. And, you know, I started, you know, I did a 48 hour right after that, you know, before I knew anything, just went right into a 48 hour fast. And I certainly will jumpstart any diet. Let me tell you, I did that jump started the diet. But while I was in there, uh, one of the sites that I ran across while on the fasting was low carb down under. Uh, and I cannot say to anybody who's listening to this, um, please, God, go to these people. I'm a uh, went to school for engineering, and uh, I've always been a very scientific mind. So that was something. Uh, and medical always interested me. I, you know, it wouldn't have surprised me if I'd gone into the medical field. I thought about being a veterinarian when I was younger. These are all things I wanted to do. And so even though the low carb down under is really for other doctors, you know, and they're they're talking to an audience or it's not podcasts like this or anything else. I ran across uh, Dr. Paul Mason, who is brilliant. I mean, he's just and he started talking about the process of autophagy and ketones and how autophagy works. And I thought, wow, what a, what a great thing. I can just reset my whole body. And this is like, oh, these ketones are great. And it dawned on me at that point, you know, that uh, listening to one of his first podcasts while I was out sunbathing, that, hi, hey, wait a second, ketones, ketosis, ketogenic diet. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know. It just kind of all fit together. You know, I was like, oh, wait, yeah. Um, and then, of course, as soon as you find somebody like, you know, Dr. Paul Mason, you start running into others, you know, uh, Dr. You know, Chafee. Um, I, it's a funny thing. I didn't run into Sean Baker till much later and start listening to him. Um but uh, so Anthony Chafee and and, uh, and and just a host of others that you know I probably should name, but I'm not going to because everybody already knows them. We they hear this all the time, and I just started voraciously listening to all these people, and all of it made sense. Uh, and so, the funny thing about my diet uh, up until that, I didn't have a standard American diet even at that point. Um, I had already gone to mostly. Uh, I, looking back, I didn't have a whole lot of seed oils in there. Um, I didn't have, uh, you know, I was mostly eating, uh, whole foods, you know, on the whole, the sausages and thing like that, but, you know, clean sausages, things, you know, however, uh, I do realize now that, uh, I drank a lot of juice. I drank a lot of juice from orange juice, pineapple blends. You know, I would put them in with my rum. I would have these. Uh, I go on vacations a lot down to Costa Rica, uh, you know, and and other places, you know. So uh, and try to go out of the country and try to take a lot of vacations a year. And whenever I'm doing that, there's a whole lot of juice going on, you know, maybe even without the, you know, with the alcohol. Uh, and this is where my problem lies. I'm certainly uh, addicted to carbs. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt. You know, the cravings were all there. It was always why, as soon as I stopped a diet, it, it, my weight would start creeping up. It wouldn't come back immediately, but it would just start creeping up. You know, I, I'd go 200, and there's two, five, uh, two, you know, 210, and you're like, wow, I don't know where, I don't know how all this happened. Um, this other host of medical issues I had, it, it just thought were old age, you know, but um, so I went on the, Around April, probably mid-April, I just kind of slowly transferred over to a, a carnivore diet with dairy. I, I tolerate dairy just fine. Um, and I'm a very carnivore. Uh, I probably would never do an all-beef diet. Uh, I love my seafood. I, I think I was probably in my other life uh, raised by the coast. So... Um, you know, scallop, shrimp, you know, king crab, lobster, uh, you know, from freshwater fishes to saltwater fish, from salmon to, you know, I'll eat it all. I love my beef, you know, uh, steak is great. Um, I was never a chicken guy, so not a, chicken is not, you know, not a big deal, but I love my pork, you know, and usually in some kind of a sausage form, you know, that I love, you know, from kibasas to any of these things. Um, but I was always even back then trying to do things a little cleaner. Um, but I cleaned it all up. 
you know, I started to go and I got rid of, I just stopped doing carbs, period, uh, other than the, obviously the ones that I'll have from uh, from dairy. Uh, but I'm not a huge, I mean, I do do dairy, but I don't do more than a cup of milk and, and I do do that every day. Obviously not when I'm fasting. Um, and I went ahead and I still kept my fasting. So I do a 42 to 40 day, uh, 42 to 44 hour fast every Sunday um, till Monday, uh, I mean, till Tuesday around 10 o'clock. I don't eat this complete water fast. Um, that was just also to get the weight down. I probably changed that to doing that only once, either a month or twice a month. Um, I'll always do it because I like the autophagy effects. It's really nice. But I, I, um, I do that different now. And uh, that's how I found it. This is how I found carnivore, <laughs> you know, that uh, through the internet and through fasting, which was uh, a godsend to me. And right now, just so you know, I... I weigh 180 um, and I'm ripped Um, and I ripped and I don't go to the gym. I work out at home and I am, uh, I don't look like a 55 year old. I'll tell you that right now. (laughs) Um, It's, it's de-aged me as you saw in the pictures greatly Uh, and thinned out my face obviously. And I'm not skinny, uh, but I'm, I have, I'm small bone, only have a seven inch wrist. Um, But I packed on, I pack on muscle now. <laughs> like I don't have to try much, <laughs> you know, some push-ups, and, uh, and I, and I'm doing good. Some, some curls and, and I look great. You know, that's, uh, that's been one of the surprising things. Yeah. Wow. That, that's awesome. And quite a, quite a journey to get here. Yeah. Um, so regarding your knee and arthritis and that kind of thing, how has that changed since you've been on carnivore and fasting? It's such a funny story because uh, my partner, the, the, and the, I can relate how this happened. I got up one night, um, shortly after starting, I was probably less than two weeks really of going carnivore, you know, like, just, let's get rid of those carbs. Let's get these down to zero most days and some days, you know, 10, 15, you know, some dairy that I'll, you know, have on our and scallops have carbs in them, which is who knew. Um, I got up. You know, you always, I'm 55. I'm going to go pee once in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know, uh, usually, you know, I'm four o'clock in the morning. I got up and got out of bed and I just went to the bathroom. And I went and I got to the bathroom and I'm doing my business. And I realized I just got up and walked to the bathroom like a normal person. I had been for years now shuffling. That old man, oh, everything hurts. Oh, you know, you're just kind of, and your feet are just kind of shuffling around there. And and that old man shuffle, and I had it. It was, it was no doubt. And I went, what the hell just happened? I walked like a normal person in the middle of the night after being asleep, you know. And uh, I had already noticed that my inflammation, swollen eyes, we call eye boogers, all that had kind of gone away. Um I did notice an allergy improvement kind of almost immediately um, that I wasn't having uh, as much of an issue. Um, my cat, <laughs> bless his heart, he's a stray that uh, we, saved, we saved his little life. Uh, and he bonded with me on, on a level that's ridiculous. But he sleeps right here, like right there. <laughs> so as a guy with allergies to cats, severe allergies to cats, it's always been kind of a problem. Um, and he still sleeps there, but I was already not really having my sneezing fits that I'd have even with the allergy meds, um, that they would just barely contain them. Um, but it already started to like, huh, geez, I haven't sneezed in a day, which I haven't done in probably 30 years. <laughs> um, so those were one of the first benefits right off the bat, you know, that the arthritis is gone. You know, I have absolutely no arthritis. I get a stiff knee. Um, I, I can't call it pain anymore, but just a, a bit of stiffness um, if I'm doing a workout. Um, I squat right now. I have a couple of 40 pound dumbbells and I squat, I do 80 pounds like 20 times. And I do that, eh, get a little, get a little, you know, a little, uh, stiffness in it for, you know, 15, 20 minutes afterwards when it's gone. Um, no muscle, muscle fatigue after, after doing anything at the house, uh, whatsoever. Um, it's bizarre. I mean, I, that's the other thing. Is I've never been a workout guy. I, I, I didn't do that. I was the guy that just didn't do it. I don't. I hate it. I, I still do hate it. I, I really do. I hate exercise. But I'm motivated to exercise now. I, I have too much energy, and so uh, I do 
you know, four times a week, you know, um, I'm 55. <laughs> I went from zero push-ups, and I st- this is how I started my workout. I, uh, doing them against the bed, leaning push-ups that I could do probably eight, <laughs> you know, especially after having been inactive all this time. Uh, so now I do about 106 a day. Um, I do 50 push-ups at once, and then I'll do 40 uh, for my second set. And then I end up in my last of my workout, um, which is 22 different exercises that I do uh, uh, Atlas push-ups, which I was a murder if you've ever done those. Holy Christ. Um, you know, I'm a uh, uh, What's an Atlas? Can, can you explain atlas what an Atlas push-up is? An Atlas push-up is where your body, um, your, your hands are basically, I have handles, but you can put them on blocks. And so when you're doing them, you're going below. You actually go below 45 degrees. Well, but you can go as below as far as you can go down and then go back up. So the ground doesn't allow you to do that um, because there's a ground there. But you can actually go below where you, the ground would be. Uh, and so once you do that, it's, it is, um, I, my goal is there. And I, I started doing pull-ups and, and uh, chin-ups. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm working on those, but uh, I've never been able to do those since I was in the service when I was 17. <laughs> So, um, yeah, you can do those now. And it's just, uh, I still hate it. Still have to motivate the hell out of myself every morning. Like, you're going to go do this. Uh, because I just don't want to be the old man. I, I think the old man shuffle thing, really eye-opening. Once I didn't have it, I'm like, if I can reverse that and I can not be that guy, you know, when I'm 65, 70 years old and I'm still walking around and doing these things. Yeah. I mean, the, the fitness thing is great. I'll never run again. Uh, I can't run. Um the leg, the operation of the leg now, I look like Forrest Gump. <laughs> uh, I can't, I can put the brace on and I can try, you know, I can jog for a little bit with a brace on. Um, but the operation, the knee just doesn't, um, the gait's all wrong. And I haven't, I, I can't learn the gait again. I, I just, I can't, can't sprint. I have a dog. I, she's, she's great. I have a chocolate lab that uh, she wants to run with me and I'll, kind of, you know, get rough and tumble with her if I've got the brace on, but, uh, you know, I'll never do that again, but, uh, it's all right. Didn't like running anyway. <laughs> it's all strength, right? You know, everything that I do is strength, you know, building and just trying to build strength is because I'm old now. And, uh, everything that I, you know, Sean Baker would tell me that resistance training, damn it. <laughs> and so, uh, not that I want to look like him, but. Uh, mm. So, um, like day to day, how are you eating? Are you doing like OMAD, TUMAD? Yeah, sometimes. You know, when I when I talk about, um, I'm right about where the stage where I'm going to drop down to um, drop down from doing the long term fasting less a month. When I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do a 24 hour, which is basically an OMAD, um, from Sunday to the Monday. You know, two o'clock. I stop eating at two o'clock on Sunday, and then I'll pick it up on Monday. I'll drop down to that. And, and every now and then I'll add that in there. But because I'm already doing autophagy, fasting, you know, if I'm doing these 42-hour fasts, I don't really feel like the need. But I, I restrict my uh, eating between 10 and 2 generally. I, don't, I won't eat. I won't take in calories before 10 o'clock in the morning. And generally by 2. I mean, life gets in the way. Sometimes you're, you know, you're going to go out to a restaurant and you're going to eat, you know, um, like I did the last time I was there, I had a uh, – I had um, – Mahi with a side of king crab. <laughs> so, and I had shrimp for appetizers. <laughs> like, the lady was just like, you, you want a side? I said, yeah, I want a side of king crab. <laughs> you know, put that on the plate. <laughs> she thought that was uh, amusing. But, um, but you know, sometimes you're going to do that past, you know, uh, three, four o'clock. But I, I really won't take in any calories of any sort. I mean, maybe just something. But the, the smallest amount of calories possible. Uh, past four o'clock, uh, usually right. two o'clock, but absolute hardcore four to six is that's mm-hmm. my cutoff time. And so I'm always, uh, I've had, when I went to my blood test, I wasn't even, I, I had wine that night, which is the only thing that the only other calorie, the carbs that I will do every now and then is I'll have a glass of wine and they're low calorie. I mean, you only get a carb per ounce of wine, you know, so it's not big carb load on you. Every now and then I'll have one of those. And I'd done that before I had my test, you know, and I fasted for my fasting insulin and, you know, and all that. And he, he wanted to do a ketone test on me as well. And I was plus five. Uh, so the, the test goes off at five and I was above that. 
And so I know that I'm going into ketosis pretty fast and easily. And then my body goes in there and stays there um, pretty, pretty well. So, um, and I definitely go on, I'm a fat burner now for sure. You know, I, I, everything about, you know, everything that you read about how your body reacts, that's the way my body reacts now. Um, and I never eat enough carbs to ever change that. And I will never eat, I won't do it ever. <laughs> this is, yeah. you know, a lifestyle change. It's a, a life change. Mm. which I really owe so many doctors, uh, my life. I feel like I have my life back. There's a lot of other medical issues. If you want to go over those that have all changed. <laughs> oh yeah, please. Can you share those? Um, I was diagnosed young, uh, with a very rare form of epilepsy. Um, that is not, um, it's not, I don't have muscular seizures. Basically I have vascular seizures where, um, it, it works kind of like a migraine and it comes on very much like a migraine without the headache. Um, it can get so bad. I have short-term memory loss, uh, things like that. Um, I've met it, I've mitigated these over the years and I know that there's just a lot of things I don't do. Um, I don't sit under ultraviolet light. Uh, you know, and my, I've been blessed that, uh, as I ran companies that I've been able to not be in the office under lights, you know, I've been able to, to mitigate all these things, you know, fluorescent lights specifically, because fluorescent lights have a frequency that, you know, they'll drive people like me crazy. Um, and so, you know, I, I might have now once or twice a year while I have a small episode or something, um, it acts like a transient ischemic attack, uh, like a small mini stroke. Um, but they're, they're transient. They generally don't last a whole long time and then they go away. Uh, since the carnivore thing, I haven't even, I, I already know there's no way. Um, I don't even feel anything. It's a, just a totally different feeling now um, to my body that it's it's gone. I haven't had one since, and I, I, I seriously doubt that I will. That's one. My arthritis is gone, obviously. Uh, I've had eczema uh, on and off all my life. Uh, yeah, not, nothing like that. I've also had other various skin disease, uh, skin issues where you have a buildup of skin tissue that you can actually scrape off with your fingers. That was one of the first things I noticed that uh, it just disappeared on its own. I just cleared up. Um, I, uh, my eyesight's gotten better, uh, which is really surprising. Um, <laughs> it's like, wow, that's really cool. Um, I don't have bad eyesight. Um, I don't actually see out of one of my eyes. Uh, I'm, it's, I can, if I shut one eye, I can see out of it, but I'm so dominant to the other eye. I don't see out of it at all. Um, and it was because when I was young, I was born with very poor vision in that eye and I just kind of shut it off when I was, you know, as a kid. Um, and I have a note for that. If you go to the, if you go to the DMV, by the way, uh, cause they have you look in 3d things and they want you to read both sides and I don't see the other side. So they're like, Oh yeah, sorry. Um, but that's, you know, my other eye has um, started to have ocular issues. I was starting to have floaters. Um, I picked up floaters probably four years ago. And I went to the doctor and they were like, yeah, you're getting old. Eh, there you go. You're having, you're, you're starting to lose your eyes. I had 20, 20 in my good eye. And it's like, yeah, you're starting to lose all that. You don't have to worry about it. Well, got news for you. You do, you can turn it around pretty easily. Um, the, I have no floaters anymore. I, I can't find them. I mean, you know, I just try to look for floaters. Can't can't find them anymore. It was just gone. Um, my night vision is in, it has improved. Um, and the, uh, just overall, the vision is probably, you know, I, to put a percentage on it, it's probably got 20%, 25% better already. And this is, I haven't even been quite six months yet. Uh, my hearing ringing in my ears, um, bad, uh, did a lot of concerts when I was young, a lot of concerts, too much band handling. Ah. But um, yeah, that's improved probably 40% um, to where the ringing sometimes would keep me up before I would go to sleep. And that's not an issue anymore. Um, I go, to, I sit in the bed and I can, I can hear it if I just be quiet, um, but it's so much of a less of an issue. It's now, it's, it's, I don't even think about it anymore. Uh, it's just, it's not there. Um, I can't get a sunburn, which so many other people have said, which is really funny. Um, when I say I can't, I mean, I can't, um, I, I gone to, down to Costa Rica and sitting in the sun for hours, uh, sitting on a boat for hours, uh, without, I've never worn sunscreen in my life. 
uh, I don't wear it. Um, I now it's really frustrating because I can't get past a certain tan. I don't get dark. I used to get when I was a kid, I used to get really, really dark. I can't get dark like that anymore. I get dark. I mean, you can't see it in this lighting because I'm right under these lights and the stupid screen here. I'm pretty dark, um, but I can't get to the anywhere near the dark. I, and no matter what I've done, I mean, I, I've sat out in my lawn here and I got good sun for three hours and not tan. Just, I mean, I'm, I just stay where I'm at right now. It's kind of, I've reached the peak. I, I don't know. It's the strangest thing. I mean, cause I'm trying to like, it's a little darker and that would be nice. Um, no, <laughs> no, you're not going to get any darker. It's, you know, it's like weird. Um, however, the second, uh, and the, probably the most important, uh, other than the arthritis that I, that I had was, uh, was before I had really started, I hadn't heard any stories yet. I hadn't gone into your channel. I hadn't heard, you know, normal people. I didn't know about the sun thing. I've had teeth issues all my life. Um, drank too much soda when I was young. I mean, I did stop most of the soda, uh, when I got older, but it wore down my teeth badly. Um, the acid in it just wore it down. I had a propensity to hold fluids in my mouth too. And that acid would sit there and really erode out the teeth. And, uh, I spent my money on a kid's teeth and didn't do mine until I was later. And now I probably have $30,000, dollars in my mouth right now. And not that I, I don't, I'm not trying to get them white or, you know, or perfect teeth, just implants, things like that, crowns, all the stuff that I've had. I've got quite a few implants in my mouth. And so my uh, dentist and I are really good friends. <laughs> I went to my dentist um, probably about a month and a half after... And I hate going to the dentist because it hurts because I've had gum swelling and receding gums my whole adult life. Uh, I went in and my hygienist went, what are you doing? And I went, what do you mean? She said, gums aren't swollen. And I said, what? She goes, yeah, uh, I don't really see anything going on at all. You know, it's only like, might have a little bit, but it's not really anything there, you know? And I went, huh. Did my cleaning and the cleaning took less time than it's ever done. I don't, I can't just do regular cleanings. I have to have deep pocket cleanings every time I go um, because the pockets have built up. I just went uh, yesterday and again, fastest time that I've ever been in there. Uh, my pockets are receding. They're, 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 um, they're receding, they're growing back. And so I am having um, already, I'm starting to have progress with uh, my gum disease being completely reversed. And that was the first thing. And this is before I heard anything about this. I'd heard from nobody else. I was just dumbfounded in the chair going like, wow, what did you do? I, I don't eat carbs. And, you know, I, I, I don't eat. And so, oh, you don't eat sugar. And I'm like, no, I don't eat carbs. You know, so I, I take in as little as humanly possible. Um, and that was that was a biggie. That was one of the ones that was. Uh, yeah, that that was life changing for me. I can't even. Mm -hmm. I can't. I don't. I mean, I almost wanted to cry. You know, I was like, <laughs> your gum yeah, health it, is like this overall picture of your general health as well. You know, and the pain. I I, I hated going to the. I, I'd really rather have a knee operation than go to the dentist. And I would have said that at any particular. And it's truth. Um, just because of the pain, You're getting a cleaning is so painful from the gums. It's just excruciating and. You know, and four months ago, I first cleaned it. I was like, yeah, not a big deal. And this last cleaning, I sat there and, you know, it was just a breeze to go through. And uh, I can't I can't describe to people how different that is. People would just never understand it. Uh, my allergies now, again, are probably 60, 65% better. I went off. I don't take any uh, steroids anymore. Uh, the only one that I do is a Zelestine, which is just a nasal antihistamine. Uh, and I'm still on that. Uh, I, I think it's more from just uh, habit at this point. I probably weaned myself off of that. I've, I've weaned the dosage down how many times I do it already. Uh, Flonase is all gone. So all steroids are gone. All medications are gone. I take no pain meds uh, for anything. I wasn't taking any pain meds for my, uh, because they don't work on me. I'm I'm one of those people that don't respond to pain meds and I mean morphine. It doesn't matter what you give me. I don't respond at all, which by the way, made that accident fun. Um, yeah, real fun because I don't respond to any of the, I mean, it's, they had me on, um, they had me on morphine. They had me on so many drugs and I couldn't have told you the difference between 
before they gave them to me and afterwards. And I should have just told them then because I kind of already knew this about myself. And they were just like, yeah, well, some people don't respond. And I'm like, oh, great, I got to live through this. You know, it's <laughs> got to get through this the hard way. Uh, by the way, it's really painful. Um, <laughs> don't recommend anybody say anything that's uh, off topic here. Everybody, listen real carefully. Do not get on ladders, period. It's not worth your life. Don't do it. Uh, don't do it for any reason. Let a professional do it. Let a professional who's got safety equipment, don't get on ladders. Um, I don't care what age you are. If I would have been 20 and I had done this and I, the rest of my life would have been crap for, you know, uh, for activity levels. And they are, I mean, it still is. Um, that'd be a message that I would give everybody. And the second message is don't eat carbs, get off the crap. <laughs> you know, it is terrible. You know, what a what a testament this is to the resilience of the human body that right. this has been five or six months for you and all of these things have turned around. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in, in it, and I, oh, yeah, God, I almost forgot. IBS. Um, I'd gotten to a bag where it was, you know, I got to go. I got to go now. Um, bad. You know, to where my partner was just, you know, like, Jesus, if I was having one of those times, I've certain, I've, I've definitely heard some stories online that are worse than mine were, um, before. <laughs> um, but mine was getting bad. Uh, and I would say I'm 50% better, um, already with that. And I'm seeing improvements with that. The biggest problem, the biggest improvement is, is the urgency. Um, you know, the, oh, oh God, you know, the, I'm gonna crap myself if I don't get in somewhere right now. I don't have that. You know, I, and now I just have a, oh, I, sh I should probably go. You know, that's kind of the thing. Um, still loose stools um, that I'm battling, you know, on and off. Um, but it, it, you can see a progression already happening that, um, that I think will, uh, you know, that are gonna clear up. You know, I one of the doctors I listened to, um, and I can't, could have been, uh, Eddie, uh, a bunch of these ones have said, look, you, you, you spent 50 years putting yourself in this position as far as being metabolically unhealthy. And it's going to take you more than a couple months to get out. And so I'm, I'm, I'm ready for you give it to three years and see how much better I am in three years, you know, than I am now. I, I can't imagine it can't just continually get better. Um, you know, uh, there are negatives to carnivore diet. Would you like to hear them? Loose skin. You lose the weight. And even though that I am ripped, I have loose skin now in my belly region. That I'm really hoping that autophagy, because I know that it will help for uh, for loose skin issues over time, will help. Uh, but I know I got to give it time. And it's going to, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to happen overnight that I'm just going to have this tight skin around my stomach anymore, you know, but, um, yeah, one of those things, if you're losing a lot of weight fast, uh, obviously I've lost, uh, 47 and a half pounds since, um, since well, really, uh, mid March, uh, maybe mid to late March. Um, and I, I don't lose weight, by the way, I'm, I'm not losing weight. I'm 180 now, and I'm really happy with 180, which is really about what I went to the service at when I was 17. Um, although I'm much more muscular now, so my fat, uh, my, anybody wants to know I'm 13.8% fat by calipers, uh, body fat right now. And I know I'm still losing fat right now because I have the calipers and, uh, the scale is not moving, but the calipers, the millimeters are shrinking, you know, so I'm still losing all the fat. Um, but I'm definitely replacing it with muscle. I never in my life, any been near this muscular, I, I, I feel better now than I did when I went in the service at 17. <laughs> That's awesome. I hear you on the loose skin, you know. Um, <laughs> I Nobody talks about it. <laughs> it, it uh, like, uh, I, I was never massively overweight, but, you know, I was unhappily overweight. Right. I've lost about 30-odd pounds. 30-odd pounds, I think, yeah. And... Yeah. Um, so it, if I'm standing up, it doesn't look like I've got loose skin. But I get down to do push-ups and I realize, oh, yeah, I've got quite a lot of loose skin around my belly. 
I can't tell you, David. You have no idea how many times I've looked down doing those push-ups and gone, wow. You know, it's like, geez, you know, you, you start feeling good about any other portion that I have, and I don't mind. I, again, I, I said from the beginning, I don't have any ego here. Um, I have sad belly button. It looks like it's frowning. Just kind of, kind of droops down a little bit. You know, it used to be like a little, a little circle. And now it kind of droops around from the edges, you know, that the sad belly button, even when I'm standing up, you know, you don't see much when I'm standing up. But like you said, just sit down or anything else. And you're just like, wow, you've got a little too much skin. And how, how many, how long have you now been carnivore? Uh, just over two years now. Yeah. Have you noticed any improvement over time? I don't do push-ups enough anymore to have noticed, to, to have paid attention. <laughs> the thing is, um, for me, I, I just, I got to, oh, and by the, to put this into perspective, by the way, of why I hate exercising, but I still do, and the whole thing about my partner, Carla's, uh, her parents. Yeah. Um, she's my inspiration a lot. She's a little older than I am. She's 62, and she does CrossFit. Um, and she goes, when I mean, she does CrossFit, she does CrossFit <laughs> and, uh, she was hit by a car when she was young, um, and had catastrophic injuries from that. And has always been into health because she's needed to, to be able to, you know, she was in the same position back then. I am now that if I, if I don't work this knee out and if I don't get the strength in this knee, I'm going to be in serious trouble. If I go back to carbs, um, I don't think I'll, I'll need a knee replacement in 10 years for sure. I mean, I already know that. And the doc said, you need, you're going to need a knee replacement pretty soon. I'm not getting a knee replacement. Uh, I'm low carb. I'm not going to have my arthritis. I don't have arthritis. I'm not doing it. Uh, and for those of you that think, by the way, and I'm talking to you people that think that you can go and you can get off your carb diet, you know, your low carb diet, and you're not going to have, I'll just add a little of this and I'll cheat. I'm at Lake Ontario over the 4th of July weekend, and I thought, I'll have a beer. And you think, I can have a glass of wine, I'm okay. But beer, as I'm finding out with the elimination diet, when you when you add things back in, you find out what you didn't actually tolerate that you didn't know. And what my body doesn't tolerate is my body doesn't tolerate grains. I can't have beer. I woke up the next day, I have never felt that bad. It was... I, all my joints were swollen. I could barely squeeze my hands shut. I, I had gigantic, I had big, huge bags under my eyes. Um, had all this stuff going on. One night of having a few beers and just wrecked me um, and just made me realize I can't. You just, I'm low carb for life. It can't, I can't get grains in there. I can't, I'm not doing seed oils. Uh, and the other one, by the way, for people uh, just to know, I, I had juice, and the other one was I ate almonds like I was trying to die from uh, <laughs> from cyanide poisoning. <laughs> I had no idea that they, of the problem with eating that many almonds. I thought whole foods, great. I'll just eat these almonds with you know. Wow, yeah, don't eat almonds, folks. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I've made the mistake with almonds before too. Yeah. And you just, you can, you can, it's amazing how many, and you don't realize you're eating that many, you know, and then you just overeat because you're carb addicted, you know, and you just, and that's me. I, I'll overeat. I will, you know, I'll, I'll overeat, period. Uh, I get carbs in there and I'm just going to keep going with it and I'll eat them and, and just don't stop. And uh, that's mine. There's a few other warning things out there. I tell people that's, what's one of the big ones. Uh, stay away from your almonds. Uh, don't think that you can don't think that you can cheat. You can't. Your body knows. Your body will tell you immediately. And then if you ignore it, you're just going to go right back on that train you're on before. And no one wants to be in that old. Folk. I mean, I'm, I don't want to be in assisted living. You know, when we were growing up, you're you're probably a little older than me. or Right. Right around my age. Dave. Yeah. Um, about the same. Right. Is that. Uh, you know, when we were young. I remember all those old people. They were running their farms. They were out there plowing fields and they were 70 something years old. Now everybody in the 70s is in the old folks home. I don't want to be that. I, I, I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to be a burden on my kids. I don't want to be a burden you know, on anybody. I don't want to be a burden on society. I want to be 
I want to be the 90 year old guy who's still walking every day, you know, who does everything. And I, I can't, I can't, that's, you know, it's not ego that me, you know, I love the way my body looks, but it's, I love the way my body looks because I now know that I'm, I'm healthy. You know, uh, I, I, you know, I want to, I want to be that guy who gets old gracefully and that, uh, and still has my mind. Um, one other small note for, uh, on a completely different subject that has to do with me and, uh, and I'm going to talk about this. I'm not sure Carla would like me to do so, but, um, she probably would. Um, her son was diagnosed schizophrenic, um, a couple of years ago. And we've been uh, dealing with that and it's, um, yeah, um, he's, he's not biologically mine, but he's mine. He's been mine since he was six. Um, we, you know, it, it's hell, uh, and a family dealing with it. And this isn't mild schizophrenia. This was, it's pretty hardcore. Um, the drugs, the, the, the stuff that they put them on and you're trying to get a cocktail that's right for it. Uh, a few months ago, he changed his diet and all stopped. He hasn't, he reports that he's not having really many kind of, uh, hallucinations, um, paranoia stopped all of that. Um, he's struggling because I don't think he understands it was ketosis that was doing it to him. Um, so he kind of goes off and right now he calorie restricts, but he doesn't, I don't know if he's really understanding he's putting himself in a ketosis with a calorie restriction. Um, you can't help it. You know, he works out all the time and he's buff and does all this. Um, but I'm seeing, a, a, uh, he was also schizophrenic, uh, and he was starting to go into catatonia. I don't know if you understand what that is. Um, and for those who don't, uh, catatonia mm -hmm. is where you go into a catatonic catatonic state. Um, he'll sit there and you'll just, you're not there any longer. Um, just not, literally there's, you know, you knock, there's no one home. Um, all this, uh, he hasn't had since, uh, you know, he has to stop. He was, we're pretty sure that, uh, he started smoking marijuana when he was young and we pretty sure that did not help the genetics of it at all. Uh, diet sucked. Um, on a level that was really bad. Um, he always was in the gym, but it, it, it doesn't, it isn't, you know, folks, gym's not going to help you. It, it, you can't work your way out of a bad diet. Um, it wasn't until he started to change his diet that things improved. Um, and so for those with mental illness, well, I didn't, I've never suffered from depression. I've never had any of these issues, uh, at all. Uh, I'm really lucky. Um, and I understand that there's just so many of us that, that aren't, that aren't that lucky. Um, this diet will, you know, from everybody that I know who's, and I do know quite a few people now, um, through this journey, um, that's helped them and it can help you too. You, you have to stop eating the way, you know, we've been eating as, you know, as we keep saying here all the time. Yeah. Well, that's that's awesome that that's he's getting better. Yeah. Um, I spoke to a lady a couple, about a week ago whose son was also suffering schizophrenia, and he's getting better as well. So there's definitely something to this. Yeah, it was uh, George Edie, the doctor Edie, that was. Uh, that, uh, I'm hoping I'm mispronouncing her name. Um, that I had run into while Paul Mason. You know, again, I run into there because she was on low carb down under uh, podcast. And again, you know, I'm a, a scientific mind. So, I mean, all of this makes perfect sense to me. Uh, as soon as I heard it, I knew it was the truth. Um, I've been very skeptical of, of so much of uh, uh, through my own health things through my life and being misdiagnosed and for all these things. Uh, very skeptical of medical field for a long time, so just putting it really mildly. Um, and so. Once I ran into this, it just, it's, it, you know, it's, it was just obvious, you know, this is, this is what it is. This is what's causing our problems. I was definitely, um, if I wasn't pre-diabetic, I was so close as to not even be funny. Um, 
my blood work, I had one blood work done so far and I'm going to do another one in, I think it's February, um, a six month afterwards. Uh, I hadn't been in it for long enough to, I think it was, you know, but, um, I'm probably a lean mass hyper responder for my LDL, uh, cause my LDL went nowhere. It's always been 200, but I know from uh, a couple years ago, um, before I had life insurance done, they did a uh, lipid test on me and my triglycerides are through the roof. My HDL was crap. And right now it's a, the last, and that was in, uh, early May. So I'm really, was just on the carnivore diet. I was already on a one-to-one -one ratio for HDL triglycerides. So that it already corrected itself, you know? Um, so I, yeah. I don't worry about them anymore. Everything, I look great. You know, my A1C of course is low just because, um, it, you know, I had already started the diet before then too. And just losing the weight, you know, your A1C kind of tendency, you know, tends to normalize anyway. And I did my fasting insulin for the first time, but I had already been on, been on it for at least a month. So my fasting insulin was uh, four uh, in, in the U.S., which is, uh, uh, actually it was 3.5. Um, so it couldn't have been any better, which I feel great about. You know, I feel like um, every male in my, uh, every male in my family uh, in literally as far back as I can go um, has died of heart issues. Every one of them. Uh, my father had a congenital heart issue when he was born that he had to have open heart surgery when he was 18, 19 years old. He died early of, uh, of a heart attack. Um, and I didn't know his family until uh, recently. I didn't, um, but all my mother's side, everybody, including my brother who was stabbed through the heart and murdered. So, I mean, even he died of a heart problem. <laughs> uh, so I figured I was a goner from heart disease. Uh, and the funny the humorous part about all that is that my heart's what saved my life is because they all told me if I hadn't had a strong heart, those uh, pulmonary emboli would have killed me. So the only thing that saved you is for some reason, you have a really strong heart and you're, you, you just made it through that, the critical stage, you know, before you could start breaking up the blood clots. And, uh, and I had a ton of stress, obviously on your heart, trying to push out these, push through these blood clots. Um, they said, and again, I mean, for people to understand, the blood clots are bigger than my screen. Uh, my blood clots were estimated that they blew up through my uh, through my leg. Were let's see if I can get this correct to you. Kind of possibly in the thing. About that big, two of them in my legs, and they just chopped them up through my heart and blew them into my lungs. So, if you didn't have a strong heart, I'd have been dead. <laughs> uh, that, should have been dead. Huge. As everybody said, as my uh, as the doctor said. Uh, yeah, you should be dead. I'm not, we're not really sure, but yeah. Hey, great. You know, you're alive. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. What a journey. And, all that, and I really feel like um, my pulmonary stuff is behind me now. I feel that's the other portion that I, I don't talk about. And I haven't really talked about even with Carla is my lungs feel so much better. You know, I can breathe again. Um, I can breathe deeply. I'm not having these, uh, you know, asthma like issues um you know my lungs and it's just you know or I, I was having a hard time another thing that nobody talks about here that i'm going to talk about and people can laugh um carnivore cures boogers you heard it first um i don't have as many boogers <laughs> i don't know what it is um i used to have to clear my nose out in the shower you know you blow your nose out in the shower and then you're doing all I've done that since I've been on carnivore. I just got just almost nothing up there to clear out anymore. Um, and I know obviously a lot of that also had to do with my allergies and, you know, but just always had all this stuff I was having to clear out of my system. And uh, it, it had given me a chronic, um, I still have it, but I'm getting better with it. Uh, clearing your throat because I have post nasal drip from the allergies constantly uh, for the last 20 years. Uh, and you get it to what you're doing reflexively because you've done it so often, you don't realize you're doing it as much. But I seldom do it anymore. Um, I mean, I do, but it's, you know, it's almost like I just said it, now I feel it, you know. Um, but that's another thing that it cleared up. And the lungs thing is just, it can't, you know, you can do exercise, you can do these things, and you're not, you know, you don't feel like there's something sitting on your chest all the time. Uh, yeah. 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 Um that that's 
awesome that yourself and the people around you have seen so so much in the way of improvement. Um, how how would you recommend someone get started with this? Uh, find clean food. Um, look, I'm 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 lucky that I'm I'm not uh, I'm not rich, um, but I'm not poor. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm doing okay. You know, I, I guess I'm living the good American life. You know what I mean? I I, I do well for myself, um, which means I don't have to be really picky about my food. Um, can I plug plug people I have no affiliation with whatsoever? Um, U.S. Wellness uh, out of Missouri um, is a farmer down there that they ship throughout the United States. Um, they ship uh, frozen and it comes frozen and they get it to you in an absolute hurry. Uh, it's not overly ridiculously expensive, but all, you know, everybody does a grass fed, grass finished beef. You know, you can find that. I can find that at my local grocery store right here now. And I can find good cuts. They tend to be small, uh, which I have a problem with because, you know, what's a four, four ounce filet going to do a guy who's 180 pounds, <laughs> you know, um, they, you know, from them, they don't have this, you know, they don't do that. And also all their other things are clean. Their pork is clean. And when I mean clean, they're not feeding their pork any grain. I mean, it's all, it's, <laughs> their, their pigs are out there being pigs, you know, eating their, their slop that they should be and the scraps that they should be. Um, there's no soy, there's no, there, you know, there's no growth hormones for that. And the impossible one to find in America, uh, the same thing with their chicken, which is impossible. I don't know of any other, I have looked, I haven't found anybody that does chicken, you know, that uh, they can ship that does that. So they do that as well. Uh, they do clean sausages, which are no sugars. There's no sugars in anything that they have whatsoever. Um, there's no nitrates, there's no nitrates. I don't worry about them as much because um, they're in your saliva. There's, you know, there's too many conflicting conversations about those. I don't really worry about those, but if, you know, if they don't have them, great. Um, clean bacon, you know, all of this stuff. Uh, and I love sausages, you know, and I'm not worried about obviously processed, you know, you ground the meat up, like, get out of here. It's like going to hurt you. Um, but they, you know, they're so good. They have lamb and clean lamb. And so you can have lamb sausages, by the way, highly recommend lamb sauce. <laughs> so there's delicacy. And there's in just an enormous amount of different meats that you can do it from. And uh, it, it pays to obviously buy anything from them in bulk. Um, but I really, if you can afford it, um, you know, to buy your meat that way and spend, you know, I probably spend two to $300 every time I order from them, but I'm also buying all that in the grocery store. So it's not really, I don't really see much of a difference because I'm not buying all this junk food. I don't, there's no soda in the house. Um, I drink non you know, I drink a uh, non-homogenized milk. Uh, when I do drink it, you know, the little cup, just a small little bit of cup that I'll have. Um, those and I get that locally as well. That's that, that's the food you know that you that you want to do. And uh, I I couldn't recommend them more. Uh, if you like beef jerky like me, and I love as a snack beef jerky. Um, there's not a lot of companies that go actually sugar free that have sugar free product. Um, and uh, I can actually tell you, um, there's a company that um, not everything that they have in there, but they've got quite a few of them and it's good. It's again, incredibly clean. And I have to remember who it is because I just ordered it today. So, um, it is, um, people's choice, uh, people's choice here, another clean company that you can go with. And this is how I end up shopping. You know, I end up ordering a lot of stuff online, uh, because it's, you just can't find this stuff. I, even the local butcher that I have, his stuff isn't grass finished. It's not, you know, and I've looked at other ones. It's, it's, it's just too hard to find. And I would love to do it that way. And I probably, you know, save some money. Um, but yeah, the next thing is, is here in America, things are changing. We are getting grocery stores to have some of this cleaner product in there. You know, um, we, we do have, uh, you know, I can get good eggs. I can, you know, I can get good poultry, poultry. I can find lamb. Um, I can find, you know, uh, wild caught fish. You know, I try not to, the other thing, people try not to get your fish that's farm raised if you can. I mean, but again, what I think it's, uh, I think also Sean Baker says, look, you know, any meat's better than no meat. So if it isn't, you know, if it's still, even if it's farm fish, you know, fine, just, you know, don't eat carbs, <laughs> um, you know, and uh, so hopefully that'll, you know, that that's kind of 
how my grocery bill is gone. I don't know if that answers the question or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, especially around the pricing, you know, a lot of people when they're getting started, they're so concerned about the pricing, but they're not really looking at it in terms of look at all the things you're cutting out. Oh, yeah. Look at all the the snacks and the box stuff that you cu you're cutting out. And, the, you know, it ends up being about the same or less. Yeah, I, I don't I haven't done a cost analysis of it right now. Um, because usually I let Carla do the shopping. And since this whole thing came over, I've been doing it. So it's costing me a hell of a lot more again. <laughs> uh, uh, but she lets me because I've just got these relationships with these companies already. And it's easy for me just to make the orders from it. It doesn't matter, um, you know, who does it. Uh, but one thing I'll tell you right now, folks, um, we're going to move in a couple of years down to the Georgia coast. Uh, I want to be, a, I want to fish, <laughs> you know, again, I, I love, love fish. Um, what a great way of carnivore to just retire and fish. It, you know, what a great thing to do, you know? <laughs> um, but I, I say that to say that one of the things we talked about is we have an enormous refrigerator, you know, it's one of these, you know, we had between the two of us, we have four kids, you know, that they're all grown and out of the house now, but we always had these big, you know, spaces and uh, get a deep freeze folks, really small refrigerator. Cause there ain't nothing in my refrigerator. <laughs> Just, you know, <laughs> mustard because it's not, you know, there's no carbs in mustard. <laughs> you know, I'll eat that with my sausage. Um, and that's by the way, they, I, I do, I do spice things. I mean, I think it's ridiculous to, I'm not, I'm not in a cult. I'm not in a religion. I'm not vegan right? Oh my God, I might eat a spice or, you know, if it doesn't bother me, I'm not going to kick it out of my diet because of that. But that would be the only plant-based food I'm currently having. And my, my woman turned mostly carnivore too. She's, she's, uh, she's more ketovore. Um, and certainly does, uh, she can't give up a couple of her things <laughs> that she's used to eating plant-wise, but, uh, very, very little anymore for her. She feels great as well. She's, uh, uh, she's always been, obviously, as I was saying, uh, rather athletic, but uh, she's a rip 62 year old woman, <laughs> you know, and she's gotten uh, more so from, you know, just in the last few months that she's been on board with this because she feels great as well. Um, she's one of those that can't go down to an OMAD. She's, she's convinced herself that she has to eat, you know, multiple times a day where I, I don't really feel the need more than twice a day. You know, to have a, any kind of a meal, I might have a piece of cheese or a piece of beef jerky, you know, as a snack. But so so locale that it, I don't I don't worry about it messing with my uh, uh, my insulin levels much. <laughs> nice, that that's awesome. She's having good results too. Yeah. So, Diego, do you have any social media or any way of reaching out to you? No, that's the. Uh, the people that know that do know me and to see they doing this are going to laugh their their what's up. I don't have Facebook. Uh, I'm not on anything because I'm just an intensely private person. It really, you know, Dave Mack, I have to thank you personally because um, I wouldn't be doing this. Um, I'm not going to go try to become a social media person to put my message out there. You know, I'll tell people and I do people like, hey, God, you look great. You know, what are you doing? Well, if you're asking, I'll tell you. You know, um, you think you, I should do it. I think you need to make up your own mind. I, I'm not I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. I can tell you that. I can tell you scientifically that you're screwing yourself if you'd like to hear that. But most people don't want to hear that. Um, but. Um, so, no, I'm not on social media. Uh, you can't find me anywhere. Uh, I'm a ghost. <laughs> no um, worries. Um, uh, yeah, and again, I'm not here to promote myself. I'm here to promote Dave Matt. Yeah, get his show going because the more people you have on here telling their stories, the more people will know this is a real this is a real thing, and that uh, that we're not making up stories. You know that I've got my. You guys can see. You know, I he'll throw you a picture. I can send him pictures of my accident, my helicopter ride. You know, I got all my pictures. I got all. You know, I've got all the medical records right now that. Uh, the doctor could come on and say, "Yeah, you're gonna need a needs a knee replacement." He's walking around with a knee that's done, and I'm not walking around, folks. I'm hiking. I I do everything right now. I'm doing it all, and I don't have my like, brace on, so I don't rip the you know the ligaments anymore. It's not because I can't do it because of pain. I can do anything. Yeah, you know, I can. I hiked a mountain already. I mean, I I do all that. 
I'm about to head down to Virginia and a uh, camping trip and we're going to go hike and canoe and we're going to do all this crap. So for those people, you know, that no, we're it's... all real. We're real people. I'm a real person. You know, Dave's a real person. And all the people Dave has had on here, they're all real people that have been really improved by something as simple as changing what you eat. Change what you eat, change your life. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on today, Diego, and course, sharing man. your story. I right, really appreciate Max, your though. time. You know how happy I am? <laughs> I'm glad it was you, man. I really am. Cheers. I hope, by the way, if anybody, just as a shout out, I hope, you know, Baker, Chafee, all these, you know, you know, Paul Mason, all these people, you guys saved my life. I love you. 